What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning into today's video. And today we are out here on Galveston Bay. It is about one o'clock right now in the afternoon. We came out for an afternoon fishing session and we're gonna be going after really anything that bites, but mainly flounder because the flounder season closes in just a couple of days here. And we just wanna see if we can go on a last minute bite. Right now, we just pulled up to our first spot while we're waiting for that tide to move and while we're waiting for that sun to go down a little bit. And we're just trying to catch some mango snapper and speckled trout and redfish and stuff like that. And then later in the video, we will head out and specifically target flounder. We got a bunch of gulp. We got three guys on the boat today and we're gonna see if we can put, I don't know, at least a few keepers in the box. But for now, y'all stick with it, stay tuned and let's start out by catching some mangrove snapper. Okay, y'all, so the setup that we are starting with today is a popping cork with about two and a half, three feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Oh, and Caleb's on a good fish right here. Then we have a split shot and our, oh, that's a nice big mangrove. Look at that, guys. That's a, that's a big one. Wow. And then we have a little number 10 treble hook. Ooh, and our choice of bait for these mangroves is live shrimp. So they will eat pieces of shrimp or dead shrimp, but Right now they seem to be eating the live ones better. And all we're doing is casting up on this broken up rock wall right here. And it's pretty deep. And we're just getting our corks as close as we can, giving it a pop or two, and then waiting for those mangroves to pull it straight down. Missed him, y'all. It's all right. You can see that was a mangrove that bit right there because he chomped my shrimp straight in half. That's usually a telltale sign of a mangrove snapper bite. Toss it back out and see if we can get them. Should eat that dead one still. It's getting bit. And we pulled it out of his mouth. All right, let's grab another shrimp and try again. Hook her up, hook the shrimp through the head. Let's try again. Perfect cast. Ooh, there was a bite right there, y'all. Oh, he's on. We got him. There we go, another mangrove. That is about an eight or nine inch mangrove right there. And in Texas waters, mangrove snappers do not have a size limit or a bag limit. But I've said this in my previous videos, if you've seen them, if not, I'll say it again. I do not like to keep them under 10 inches because in a lot of other places, the minimum size is about 10 to 12 inches. So just for the sake of conservation, I like to do that here as well. because I want this population to get bigger. And we also do not keep a lot of them. We usually just keep about five or six and then move on to a different spot but y'all check out how beautiful these fish are look at that awesome blue stripe on their face really cool colors and they do get a lot darker color than this they'll get almost black colored so it's really cool but let's get this guy on hook grab another shrimp and try again all right y'all we just hooked up oh nice, red, nice red very nice slot red right there guys okay so i cast out a shrimp didn't get big got bit by some bait sealers Passed out another shrimp, and as soon as it hit the bottom, I was still letting line out, and I felt a thump, and this nice red picked it up. So we're gonna get him in the net here. That's a perfect slot red. Lower slot, probably about 22 inches. And that's exactly what we want to take home to eat. Boom. Slot red in the boat, guys. Let's throw him in the cooler and put another shrimp to see if we can catch another. They're definitely here. Okay guys, so here is the setup. So we have a single drop rig, circle hook, 20 pound leader, and a two ounce weight at the bottom. And we got ourselves a nice shrimp here. And all I'm doing is hooking the shrimp closer to the tail. And we're just tossing them out next to these pilings. As close as you can get them to the pilings. These redfish are loving this structure right now. We're just letting that bait go all the way down to the bottom and then just waiting to feel a hard thump. Or the last redfish I caught, I had my rod in the rod holder while I was working on the camera and the rod just started bending over. Just got a bite. I was in the middle of putting on sunblock. My face is probably really white right now, but broke me off. He, I could feel him rubbing down there in the structure. It was a good bite. Felt like a really nice fish, but oh well. Sometimes that's just how it is. We're going to retie and get back down there. So I have a fish here. Pull and drag. Oh, he came out. He came out. He was stuck in the metal down there again. And then he came out. Oh, this feels like a big one. And I don't know if my line is frayed or not, but I've got to thumb him and keep him out of there. He's taking me around the structure. Get out of there. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. Look at that rod bend. Get over here. 
Oh, that is not a slot. I don't think. Man, I didn't even feel a bite. I just saw my line slowly just kind of get a little bit tighter. Oh, if I had to guess, probably a 55 inch trout or a 36 inch flounder. Either way, we're getting it mounted. Yes, I'm high sticking this thing and yes, I'm horsing it in. And he broke me off. Guys, that is our, how many times did you break off, Toes? He broke off twice, I broke off twice. Oh, they are messing us up down there. Ain't Darn. Okay. One fish, one in the ice box. No breaking off. All right, you know what we're gonna do now, y'all? <laughs> Check it out. I'm done playing with these fish. We're gonna bust out the big reel. So I've got a 400 size bait caster right here. I've never used it before. And this thing has, I think, 25 pound line on it. So we're gonna throw that down there. And we're gonna see if we can catch one and we can horse it out with this. And if we break off on this, then I'm gonna put on some 60 pound leader and then I'm really gonna catch these things. Can't be messing with them anymore. Okay, so we got the big reel out, the big rod, and we have another single drop rig here. Doing the same thing we did earlier, taking our shrimp, hooking it back there just like that. And we're gonna drop it out next to these pilings. All the bites we're getting are coming from right next to the pilings. But that's also where all that metal is down on the bottom. Anywhere in between these big metal pilings or all around them is just covered and littered in uh, stuff to get tangled in. So hopefully we'll be able to horse them out with this thing. Got the drag set tight. This thing has 30 something pounds of drag. So we're either gonna break off or we're gonna horse them out. We'll see which one. This was out in the water for all of about 10 seconds. And we hooked up. Not a red, but that's a keeper black drum. So he's gonna go in the box. There we go, y'all. Wow, brought out the big rod just to catch something I could have caught on an ice fishing rod, but that's all right. We definitely horsed that guy up. Let's unhook him, throw him in the box, and try to catch one of these reds. Okay, y'all, well, we ran out of shrimp, so we're going to get some more shrimp right now from the Galveston Yacht Basin, and then we're going to head back and try to catch a couple more redfish, then we're going to end the day by catching some flounder, hopefully. We'll see if we can get on some, but y'all stay tuned. Let's go grab a couple shrimp and see what else we can get into. All right, y'all check this out. We got a super tiny live shrimp. That's perfect mangrove bait. Got a little broken eye on the rod here, so boom, just like that. Let's see if we can catch one on this. Woo! Right up on the rocks. Pull it off so we don't get snagged, maybe a foot or two. And that's exactly where we want it. I don't think it's gonna take long for this cork to go down. Something's biting it. Got him. Oh, that feels like a decent fish. It is, it's a nice mangrove. There we go, that's one for the box. Let's see if we can catch a couple more keepers. We're taking our last cast for a mangrove snapper right here, so I just have this tiny little shrimp. And then after this, we're heading over to try to catch some flounder. But let's see if we can get one more right here real quick. Got him. Oh, that might be a good one. That might be a really good one, y'all. Hey, I'll take that. Let's go. That one's going in the cooler. That's well over 10 inches. And I think that's a great way to end our little mangrove session. So let's throw this guy in the box and then let's head over and see if we can pull out a couple keeper flounder. We'll see y'all at the next spot. right now and we are not catching any flounder we caught one short but uh that was it we got about 30 minutes to fish and then we're gonna head back to the dock so we'll see all over there what is up y'all it is the next day we are back at the house we've been cleaning up some fish and we have our slot red right here that we filleted out and today we're gonna be making redfish throats because it is one of the most commonly wasted pieces of meat on a redfish and it's one of the best also known as a collar on a lot of other fish but here we call them redfish throats so what we're gonna do take our knife put it under these fins we're just gonna cut straight down to behind the pectoral fin here. So, just like this, right down there. Then we take it and we go up under here into the gill at the collar right here, and we just cut around the gill plate. Just like this. Being careful not to cut ourselves all the way up. Okay, same thing on both sides. Right here. Okay, 
Okay, and once we get that cut, we're just gonna flip our fish over, take our knife and break through right there. Then we grab it and rip it off. It takes a little bit of muscle. Just like that, we break that off. Give it a few twists and it should pop out of that joint right there. Boom. And now we have some beautiful redfish throats. Y'all take a look at that. Tons of meat in here. This is like the saltwater chicken wing. So let's go ahead and take this in the kitchen and I'll show you guys how we're gonna cook it up. So I started out by making kind of like a compound butter just to pour over the fish. Of course, first thing I had was a few tablespoons of butter. And then into there, I added a couple tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, as well as a few cloves of diced up garlic, and then a couple teaspoons of Italian seasoning. I popped that in the microwave for a few seconds to melt it down, took it out, stirred it together, and this is what we were left with. So the next step is to get the fish ready. Now redfish throats have a small layer of skin on them, as you can see right here, and that can make it a little tough. So we like to just rip that off before cooking. And now that that is done, it is time to season up the fish. I began by adding a little bit of olive oil, and this is just to keep it from drying out, but also to help the seasoning stick. Now on top of that, I went in with some blackened seasoning, but you can use whatever seasoning you like. Any sort of Cajun seasoning will work. After you get those very well seasoned, it is now time to add that compound butter. So I added a healthy amount of that compound butter on each of these. And you want to make sure that you smear it around so it's completely covering all the meat because that's going to kind of turn it into a crust as we cook it because of all that Parmesan melting down. And once you get that done, it's time to go in the oven. So I tossed it in for 20 minutes at 350 degrees, although I believe I ended up doing it for about 10 minutes longer. And then here is the finished product. Now to plate this up, I just started by laying down a bed of sausage jambalaya and then just putting the redfish throats right on top of it. I like to keep it super simple and y'all check out how good this looks. And of course, like always, the last thing we had to do was give this a taste, and it was amazing. I will definitely be making this every single time I catch a redfish. But hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're not already. If you are, like always, guys, I thank you so very much. That's it for right now, and I'll see you on the next one.